Adding a table is a useful way to illustrate information for quick reference and analysis. In this lesson, we'll insert a blank table, so we'll type text in the table, and then we'll format and style the table. On page two of our report, we want to add an informational table on health issues. When we're finished, it will actually look like this. A table is a grid of columns and rows that you fill with text and graphics. Our table is five columns wide and six rows high. So what we're first going to do, and go back to my original document, I'm going to place my cursor before the actual heading, preventative options, and I'm going to actually highlight the heading and the two paragraph marks below. Then I'm going to go up to the Page Layout tab, and in the Page Setup group, I'll click the Columns option, I'll click 1, and then I'll deselect my text. I'll scroll a little bit so you can also see the bottom of page 2. What you'll notice is I have a continuous section break here that starts and then ends at the bottom of the page. The reason we did this is so that our new table can appear below this heading and by formatting the heading and the two paragraphs below its one column we created a new section. This continuous section break appears before the heading and then it also appear, appears after the second paragraph mark. Now we'll be able to insert a table that spans our entire page. So I'll place the insertion point before the first paragraph mark. Then I'll go up and click the insert tab. When I click the insert tab I'll then click the table button. I could choose to create my table using the grid or I could click here the say, and click on insert table. I want to have five columns, so I, type, I could type in five if I need to, and I want six rows. I'm going to type in six. I want to make sure I have the fixed column width chosen, and I'm going to click on OK. You'll notice I now get my column. The new blank table appears, and up here in the ribbon, I have a Table Tools Design tab, which becomes active. This allows us to customize the appearance of our table. I'm going to actually click on the Home tab and then I'll click the Show and Hide Paragraph Marks to take them away. This will make it a little bit easier to actually type into the cells of our table. And with the insertion point and the first cell of our table, and when I refer to a cell, I am referring to a box that's formed by simply the intersection of a row and a column. I'm going to type the word Disease. I'm going to hit the Tab key, type Vaccine. I'll hit tab again and I'll type pro, make sure I spell it correctly, phylaxis drug tab eat and drink safely tab avoid insects. As I'm working in a table, tab will move the insertion point down to, um, to the next available cell. You'll notice when I was at the end of the first row and I hit the tab it went down to the next row. I can also use shift tab to move the insertion point back and forth in my table as well. So I'm going to continue entering the information in my table. Malaria, I'm going to do tab tab. I'm going to go up to my bullet um, option in the paragraph group of the home tab. I'm going to click the drop down and I actually want to choose the check mark, so I could put a check mark in that actual cell. I'm going to do tab tab, and I want a check mark under avoid insects as well. Then I'm going to tab, going to type typhoid, tab, bullet, tab, tab, bullet, tab, tab, hepatitis A, tab, bullet, tab, 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 cholera, tab, bullet, tab, tab, bullet, tab, tab, Japanese encephalitis. Tab, bullet, tab, 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 bullet. 
So now that I have all of the text in my table, one of the things that you can actually see is the first column is a little too wide for the um, words Japanese encephalitis. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to use the table tools. So up on the um, in the ribbon, we're going to click on the table tools layout tab, and in the cell size. group, I'm going to click auto fit. But in order for us to actually have that option, we really need to have the table selected and then we'll click on layout. And over here in the cell size, we can actually choose auto fit. When we click on auto fit, we're going to choose a auto fit contents. And what it does, it automatically fits the contents for each one of the options in our table. The width of the table columns adjusts to fit the text, but now the table is too narrow. So I'll click the auto fit button again. I'm going to actually say auto fit window. And what it does, it expands the table to fit the entire way across the um, page. So now what I want to do is actually add some other options to the table and format it more. So I have the table selected and I'm going to go over to the alignment group and I'm going to click on the align center option. This way every single one of the items in each cell is aligned in the center of the cell. All the text and check marks are now centered. But we want the first column over here to be left aligned. So I'm just going to select the first column and then I'm going to choose left aligned, align center left. That will align the text to the left, but it will align the actual text in the top vertically between the top and the bottom. Our table still looks a little basic. So what we want to do, if we click on table tools, we get this design tab that shows up. We're actually going to choose a specific design for our table. We're actually going to choose the one that is um, light list accent three. This will now be applied to our entire table. Um, it allows us to actually have a better formatted table. There are a lot of options for table styles, so you can check them out. If you want to learn more about tables, turn to page word 88 in your book.